What's going on guys? My name is Joe McRae, founder of InfoSecAddicts.com, and in this video, we're gonna talk about learning how to program. And if you're like me, programming was probably one of the worst experiences you've ever had actually trying, when it comes to trying to learn something. For me, saying the program was easy was like the furthest from the truth. I didn't go to college. Um, I, I played sports in high school. So I wasn't uh, playing on computers as a kid. I, I, I was a normal kid, played sports, uh, you know, hung out, partied and all that kind of stuff. Programming was not something that came naturally to me. I did try to take a college course later on as an adult and I took my first programming language for a college course was in C. So there I am trying to learn the C programming language and I got an F. <laughs> like not even close to a D. Like no exaggeration, I got a 42% in the class. Like I mean I Blunk that freaking class. Everything in the class was a horrible experience. The teacher would say things to me, like the teacher would write stuff on the board, like int, main, void, right? And I would be like, what is that? I would ask questions like, how come some things have parentheses with stuff in it and sometimes uh, they don't? Like, what is that? And the teacher would look at me and be like, Joe, you've been here for a whole semester and you don't know what a function is? I'd be like, well, man, if I'm still asking you after a whole semester, then that means I don't know. So I flunked the class. After that, I got a book called C Programming for Dummies. I got that, that book and I think I got dumber. I was more confused than when I actually took the class. So it took me a little while and I didn't learn how to program until I had been in the field for about eight years. So I had been a working IT security professional for literally about eight years before I learned how to program. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the things that help me with programming. I hope this helps you as much as it helped me. Let's get started. I didn't learn how to program until I had been in the IT security field for about eight years. So trust me, this sucks. <laughs> oh man, I know it sucks. All right, so I had a couple of epiphanies and those couple of things that really helped me, I'm hoping I can explain them to you and they'll really help you like they help me. The first epiphany is roots. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but basically what I meant was like, I don't know how to say, uh, like I speak Spanish, so I don't know how to say uh, dry erase marker in Spanish. I mean, excuse me, in another language. Like, I know I say it in, actually, yeah, I don't know how to say dry erase marker in Spanish. I would say, como se dice este en español? I don't know how to say this. Although I speak Spanish, I've heard people in Italian say, Como se dice, or as we say in Spanish, como se dice. And the reason I use that example is because the roots that it has. Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, their roots are Latin. Programming is really the same way. Like when you go from Fran uh, C to C++, you don't learn to program all over again you learn to say whatever it is you want to say in your new language, C, Java, Python. You don't learn to program all over. You just learn new syntax. So you go from como se dice to como se dice, right? So you just learn to say what you want to say a little differently. That for me was huge. So as soon as I started to realize like, okay, so it's more important not to learn syntax, it's really more important to learn how to communicate. And that's why I really think the real problem with people learning programming is, like you, you, you go to a brand new language and you spend so much time on syntax, where, where in the real world, if you were to start learning French, we would start you with how to say hello and how to say goodbye and how to ask where's the bathroom. In other words, how to do really common things. 
And then over time, you slowly learn more grammar. You slowly learn more syntax. Programming, when people first learn a programming language, they're introduced first to syntax. And I think that's a real bad thing. So what I try to cover is more logic. Somebody really helped me a few years ago because I was in an airport talking to this guy and he was a secure coding instructor. And I asked him, like, how do you teach classes where everybody in the room programs in a different language? And he gave me this nugget and he said, Joe, a programming language can only do three things. A programming language can only process, make a decision, and loop. It doesn't matter if it's C, C++, Java, Python, PHP. A programming language can only process, make a decision, or loop. It's the, all your programming language can do. So if you had a language and you needed, let's say, for example, to write a log parser, I would probably say something like, for every line in the log file, read the line. If the IP address is in the line, then write found IP address. It's real simple logic. Now, process, read, write, math. Well, you can read from a file, you can read from a database, you can read from a network socket. You can write to a file, write to a database, write to a network socket. Now, are there other types of decisions? Of course there are. Everything doesn't have to be if then. It could be case switch. In this case, switch to this. There are more than one type of loop. There's while loop. While this is true, do this. Until this is true, do this. So it took me a while to finally realize when someone's giving me programming advice, just try to say, are they trying to help me make a better decision? Are they trying to help me loop through something better? All you're trying to say is do this X many times. Here's the decision I need you to make. Here's the processing I need you to do. Either read something, write something, or do math. And that logic changed the game for me. If I need to write a port scanner, I'd probably say for every port in my list of ports, write a connection to the network port. If my response, right, so maybe I read my response uh, from the network connection, and if my response is, you know, SYNAC, then I know the port is open, or if my response uh, is a, a reset ACK, then write port is closed. It, the, the logic that you follow is really simple. This logic part, I needed that. I needed somebody to say, Joe, code can only do three things. After that, I, it was probably another year later. And I know this kind of sounds crazy that this happened to me over a couple of years, but that's just the truth. It was probably another year later. I had this kind of epiphany. I was writing something, and you know, this guy kind of told me, like, Joe, your, your code's too complicated. Like, you know, if you have to write this in this many lines, whatever you're trying to do is too hard. And I was like, it is? And basically, I kind of came up with a rule. Never more than five to 10. If I start coming up on five to 10 lines of code, whatever I'm doing is too hard. And if I'm coming up on like five or 10 lines, I need to put that in a function. So let's give an example. You probably don't feel like you could write TurboTax or QuickBooks. You, you know, who, who wants to write an accounting program, right? You know, I'm not good enough at that. But you probably can calculate sales tax. You probably can say the price times the tax rate equals the tax amount. So $10 times 8 cents is going to equal 80 cents in tax, right? Well, I could say, OK, well, I'm going to define Python as the language I like. Python will define a function. And they'll say, OK. If, if the sales tax, define sales tax, this number goes right in here, and then return this. So the output of this, print this, right? So it's like return this times this. So OK, the 10 goes here. 0 0.08 times that 10 will be 80 cents. All right, that's not so bad. That's a function. 
Well, if you could write a function, right? Most people could go, well, I could write a function, define it, and do three or four lines of code in here, and then have a return as the last line. That's a function. Well, if you can do that, that's a sales tax function, then you could probably do property tax and capital gains tax and income tax and estate tax. But the same way that I had five lines of code, now that I've got five functions, now that I've got five functions, I put those in a tax class. So I've got five tax functions, tax class. Five lines of code, function. Five functions, class. So then now you go, okay, well maybe I can write an expense function, maybe a function for meals, maybe a function for lodging, right? Because you know miles, like you get so many cents a mile, right? I can write a function for mileage. It's no different than that. It's the same. Most people can write a simple function. So if you can write a few lines of code, because you know your logic, right? And then you could say, well, put that few lines of code into a function. Now as I get a whole bunch of functions, put those into a class. When I get a bunch of classes, five, ten lines of ten uh, classes, I put those in a module. Some program lang programming languages call it a library, like a DLL, dynamic link library. I'm hoping that this fundamentals of software development helps you like it helped me. The roots, so you're just learning, okay, how do I say it in a new language? The structure, a programming language can only do three things. Process, make a decision, and loop. That's all a programming language can do. And then structure, right? If I'm coming up on five, ten lines of code, put it in a function. If I'm coming up on five, ten functions, I'll put it in a class. If I'm coming up on five, ten classes, put it in a module or a library. And this way, if I need to change sales tax, maybe sales tax is now 6%, and that changes it to this. You guys see it? I only changed that one thing. Right? It, it makes my software development more modular. So you're going to hear that term in the software development world, modular. Okay? So I'm really hoping that this helps you like it helped me. I know when I was learning the program, this I really struggled with this. I mean, I'm not kidding. I really struggled with this. And I hoped or wished somebody would have broke it down like this to me, because this took me a few years. I know you're probably laughing, you're like, Joe, I can't believe that took you a few years to figure out. But this took me a few years to figure out. If you found this video helpful, please write down in the comments, yeah, this was helpful, or actually, Joe, it would have been better if you covered this, or if you covered this. If you want more videos like this in the future, write down in the comments below that this is what you're looking for, so I can keep making more. I hope this helps you guys, and I hope to see you again in our next video. Thank <laughs> you.